Okay, let's begin with X19, driven damped harmonic oscillation. In the last class, we study the damped harmonic oscillator whose equation of motion is of this form. And uh, now we know that this X is a linear combination of uh, two linear independent solutions and these are either cosine or psi. And we had a special frequency in this when we define gamma equals a b over m and omega zero is a square root k over m, depending on the relative values of uh, one half of gamma uh, and omega zero, the system shows a very different result. The blue curve represents uh, not exactly the same as the blue curve, but it has an oscillating behavior the, with the decaying amplitude. It is called underdamped. And it is a strictly exponentially decaying form, the overdamped. And the critical value at which these two values are the same, we had a critically damped case. When we apply a driving force that is a sinusoidal, sinusoidal means it is either sine or cosine or keep uh, having a phase. So in either case, the sine sinusoidal function the actual solution, physical solution of this is without thinking about mathematical solutions, just based on your experience, the oscillation of a pendulum does not last forever because of damping and eventually it oscillates, amplitude becomes small, and as time goes to infinity, it just stops. That is the nature of this kind of this damped harmonic oscillator. Unfortunately, we cannot keep this one oscillating. However, if we apply the driving force, it keeps oscillating. For example, our watch, as long as our battery is not dying out, it oscillates and you, you can see the crack time for a long time. Every electronic devices and mechanical devices, so what we use, has a, some kind of a driving force. When you turn on a system, suddenly, suddenly, and as time goes on, disappears uh, this kind of behavior that is actually originated from our solution for the simple harmonic oscillator without driving force. That is called in mathematical point of view, the solution of the homogeneous equation, that is the right-hand side is exactly zero. On the other hand, in the physical point of view, there is a rapid change at t is a very small. And as time goes on, the solution is a very similar to the driving force itself, except for the amplitude. So if I apply sinusoidal function, the final result is again the sinusoidal function. And again, uh, in addition, the frequency is different, may have a different value from the original value or damped harmony oscillators case. So we, we have a slightly different value for the frequency neither this nor this, uh, but 
it has the frequency of the driving frequency only. So the, this sudden behavior at T is a very small originate from the solution for the simple harmonic oscillator without driving force, and that is called the transient defect. And as T goes to infinity, this transient defect disappears and the solution becomes a, a very simple. And we will study what happens in detail. This is a mechanical system that has a damping and we attach a motor to let it oscillate forever. Our driving force has the amplitude MA0. Here, A0 is a constant of uh, uh, dimensions of acceleration. And we are interested in, in a sinusoidal function and see any sinusoidal function can be expressed in terms of linear combination of cosine psi or exponential i omega t or e, e to the minus i omega t either. So today we study these three different inputs, but we will find we will find that these three are not different at all. Sure, they are different in nature. However, the fundamental structure of this uh, mechanism of resonance uh, is identical for all three cases. And uh, we studied the unified way to deal with these kind of uh, input for the driving force. Okay, the frequency of a particular solution, I, we have we have the equation motion that has a solution x of t and x of t has a solution that is a linear combination of this and this wait a second This one is called the solution for the homogeneous equation that we already know. But if I substitute this value, I cannot obtain the right-hand side. So this one doesn't change the right-hand side. So instead, I need a special value that is called the particular solution. to reproduce the right hand side that is not zero. So any equation of motion of this kind of form is expressed in terms of linear combination of this and X particular solution is a specific value with but there is a no free parameter multiplying because XP substitution should give this one. So it has absolute normalization. Instead, XH, that is for the homogeneous equation, I can multiply any kind of values. And actually this is a linear combination of X1 and X2, they are linearly independent. For arbitrary, arbitrary constant, we substitute X1 to here, it it gives a zero, this one also gives zero. So whatever number you multiply C1 and C2 here, you will always get zero. So general solution for this kind of equation 
is always of this kind of form. Because we know how to solve this uh, homogeneous equation, what we want to learn today is to find out the particular solution. And this particular solution is also called the steady state state, steady state solution. Because as t goes to infinity, both of these terms has the factor, damping factor that decays arbitrary. So it is a very small as t goes to infinity. So numerical value for this contribution disappears as t goes to infinity and at, at t is a very large only a particular solution survives that's the reason why it is called the steady state solution all right the frequency of the particular solution or steady state solution is the same as a driving frequency omega. That should be, if it is not the case, the left-hand side, right-hand side cannot be the same. It is oscillating with the, this frequency, but if you substitute some different one, you cannot make the left-hand side to be the same as the right-hand side. Except for the amplitude, the overall magnitude, the left-hand side must have the same frequency. But uh, there is a freedom. Although the frequency are the same, it may have a phase shift by a tiny amount uh, translated to the right or forward or backward. That should be allowed. We will find why. So find the false statement regarding the plot. We recall the under damped motion, it decays as t goes to infinity, over damped and critical damped. This plot is for the driving force equals zero. Yes, this is a damped harmonic oscillators solution, depending on the the values of uh, one half of gamma and omega zero. B, plot shows the solution for the corresponding homogeneous equation. That's correct. The plot shows the sole contribution to the transient effect that disappears as t goes to infinity. That's right. The fundamental reason for the evanescent nature of solutions is the existence of the exponential suppression factor. Yes, exponential minus one half of gamma t that makes everything decay. Okay. Consider a solution xh for the damped harmonic oscillator. Mathematically, we use the, this uh, homogeneous equation solution. Subscript H comes from the homogeneous because the right hand side is exactly zero. The solution we learn it is a it has a damping factor, and when one half of gamma is less than omega zero, in that case, square root of this that is called omega prime. Uh, this is a new frequency. However, we have a exponential suppression vector and the solution is either cosine or sine. So linear combination of this represents the solution for the under damped case that is called that that is uh, one half a gamma is less than omega zero. If one half of gamma is greater than omega zero. It is called the overdamped case, and that there is no sinusoidal structure. Instead, we have both its exponential structure. Because one half of gamma is always greater than this one, 
right? So regardless of this sign, the total, this total value is decaying. The difference is how steep the slope is. So both of them are decaying. It, they, the exponentially decaying, there is a no exponential rise up, impossible. And the third one is when these two values are the same, we call it critically damped case. And when the critically damped case, it is a exponential factor, the, the same exponential factor appears, but we, uh, we learn that we, when we write, out, write down in this kind of form, the equation of motion is reduced uh, for the y is reduced to y double dot was is a zero. That is a linear combination of c one uh, one c two t. This kind of form. That's the reason why we have two linear independent solution and multiplying c one arbitrary number c one and c two and sum them up to find out the general solution for homogeneous equation that we learned a couple of days ago already. Now, by making use of the result for the homogeneous equation, we, we want to solve the equation for the complete equation. This is called the homogeneous equation. And this is called the particular solution that we produce the right hand side. As t goes to infinity, this a homogeneous equation, homogeneous equation solution that uh, brings in the transient effect for a small t. However, as t goes to infinity, this one, it's a numerical value for this one is absolutely zero and only the particular solution survives. Let us consider how to find a particular solution to reproduce the non-vanishing right-hand side. The, a very young, very young mathematician called Frobenius introduced a very simple way to solve this kind of equation. And I told you the solution for the uh, homogeneous equation. We, we already know the solution, but we can try another way to find the solution, uh, to reproduce the solution. We know that x is a smooth function and x has a derivative and double derivative and nth order derivative, and they are all well defined. In that case, if there is no singularity, there is a no discontinuity, then any function should be expressed as a linear combination of a power series. Of, this is a function of t, so power series of t that does not contain one over t that diverges at, as a t goes to infinite and t goes to zero. This kind, kind of one is not allowed. So, the simplest way to expand this is a power series from t to the zeroth power that is constant and the first and, and so on. And actually, what we have written is the Taylor series expansion, the, the sequence a n is nothing but the nth of the derivative, nth of the derivative of this function evaluated at, at uh, t equals to zero. Why don't we substitute this x of t to this uh, equation of motion? Then what we find is a power n is decreased by two and uh, factor, you know, the derivative, uh, time derivative is n t n minus one. And the second order derivative is n n minus one t n minus two. What we have, oh, Oh, right, what we have found is I have factored this n, n minus 1 from the denominator that is n factorial. 
and this is first order first order it becomes yeah but the we have the same an so it is good to find a way to reorganize this summation uh, it is good to change this one into t to the n by adding n by 2 in that case i can factor the same powers of n together and make this three summation into a single summation the final result is a trivial and this is this is what we have found and actually uh, there is a and factorial should be written in here there is a typo anyway for any powers of n what we need to do uh, need to find is the right hand side must disappear it is something like for any number any whatever coefficient you may have ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero then a should be zero b should be zero c should be zero this is an identity that is satisfied by all x for the real number this is something like that just like this so any for whatever power t may have its coefficient must vanish to reproduce the right hand side that is exactly zero now what we found what we have found is linear difference equation when we you know, when you study a sequence in high school uh, solution of this one was found you you learned how to solve this uh, equation when the sum of the all coefficients some of these uh, vanish okay then in that case you you reduce this an into the difference something like uh, bn equals an plus one minus an and so on you you might remember the trick but now i would uh, i would rather use a rather different way that is uh, just i would substitute a n with lambda n why you will see when i substitute this one into the linear difference equation what i find is a trivial quadratic equation we are very very familiar with and this one is identical to what we have found when we substitute the trial solution this one shows that why the substitution of this trial solution with exponential function really worked because because this substitution is equivalent to the substitution of this looks unfamiliar but once you are familiar then it is a very simple way to find a solution i would say why um, you can ask me why but why not the reason why why not is there is a no absolute way to find a solution there is a no royal way if you find a solution that's it for physicists but this method really works that's the reason why we keep using this and this trial solution does mean this kind of form i substitute the trial solution a n is equal to lambda to the n what i really find is just the lambda a n a n is replaced with this lambda t to the n and n theory divided what is it it is just exponential lambda t so it looks different but this substitution of a trial solution and this substitution of the trial solution for the linear difference equation they are equivalent 
this method has been used a very long time since the introduction of the, the equation of motion in physics. So this kind of solving the difference in mathematics, they say they say it is a uh, differential equation, and the physicists open the way to to find uh, the equation looks uh, equation called the differential equation that is uh, originated from physics. What is it? That is equation of motion. All right. Find the false statement regarding the solution of the driven damped harmonic oscillator. Now we want to solve this problem. This is given. We are interested in solving the equation when the sinusoidal input is given. It is a fixed. Whatever, we will try these three cases and we will find that the solution of the three cases are unified, a single method. First, I told you because uh, this is wavy and this one is also wavy, there is no way but to have the same, same frequency. In the t space, time space, it is it should be it should be a period and inverse of period multiplied by two pi should be the frequency, and that frequency of the left side solution and right side must be the same. However, if I substitute this uh, sinusoidal function in here, when I take the derivative. Sometimes cosine becomes a sine. First of the derivative, cosine becomes minus sine. Sine becomes cosine. And double time derivative, cosine becomes a minus cosine. And sine becomes minus sine. Because of that, there should be a shift in phase. It is impossible to be the both x and f of t in phase. I mean, I need to add some phase constant without giving the phase constant, the left hand side and right hand side cannot be the, can never be the same. Okay, this is a very, very important. Our starting point is frequency of a solution and input driving force must be the same. This is not omega zero. This is not omega prime that we solved for this uh, underdamped case. This is nothing, nothing. But omega, that omega must be the same as the frequency of the driving force, except that we, we have to allow the phase shift. Without phase shift, the left-hand side and right-hand side cannot be the same. So at this stage, it is uh, good to recall the Euler's formula. Exponential i theta is uh, defined by cosine plus i sine theta, where i is the pure imaginary number that is square root of, defined by the square root of minus 1. That is the solution of x square plus 1 equals 0. And we know that i, the solution of this is uh, x equals e to the plus minus i, but from this definition is a square root minus 1. In that case, that's the solution is this one. So i is exactly defined by this. In either way, we have uh, i squared equals a minus 1 because of this equation, quadratic equation, because of this, even powers of i is a minus one to the n, and flips the sign plus one minus or plus one minus one. And if I multiply i one more time, it is a two n plus one, that is a minus n to the n, 
and i. Why don't we sum this one by making use of the uh, Taylor series expansion? And this expansion is uh, e to the x is n goes from 0 to infinity and factorial x to the n. We, we learned this in earlier stage. And what I, uh, what I do is just a substitute i theta to x. If I expand this, this uh, summation into uh, can be decomposed into two pieces, n equals even or n equals odd. It's a two, 0, 2, 4, and so on, 1, 3, 5, and so on. So that is n equals a 2k, either 2k or either 2k plus 1 from k runs from 0 to infinity and the k runs from 0 to infinity. So what I have done is I divided into two pieces with 2k, 2k, 2k plus 1, 2k plus 1 and then substitute these uh, results. And I have this i to the 2k plus 1 equals a minus 1 to the k i. And that i is a factor out. For the even case that uh, there is no additional i, it is just a minus 1 to the k. And powers for theta is a 2k and 2k plus 1. And this, uh, this is a Taylor series expansion of cosine and sine exactly. So we have reproduced the, this definition is exactly reproducing the Taylor series expansion. So it is an exact formula. When I sub, uh, multiply two complex numbers uh, represented by the Euler, Euler number, this one can be substituted in here, and I can multiply these two numbers. I can make use of i squared equals minus 1. In that case, cosine, cosine, minus sine, minus, minus, i, i. This is the real part and imaginary part that has a single i only. Then cosine, sine, sine, cosine. A trivial summation for the cosine and sine this is a cosine alpha plus beta and this is a sine alpha plus beta that's the reason why it is exponential i alpha plus beta so from this relation in reverse i can reproduce this uh, summation formula the complex conjugate is quite important. Complex conjugate is to replace the the imagine, pure imaginary part with negative sign, and that is the same as replacing theta by minus the theta. In that case, it is a unit circle of a complex plane. I have a theta, then I have minus theta. So this is a complex number z, and this is a complex number. Con complex conjugate of z that is called as a z star. Now let us solve this problem when I have this cosine on the right hand side. We have divided factor of m everywhere. So this m disappeared, this one is, uh, this k is replaced replaced with omega zero and this b is replaced with gamma. Now we rewrite on the left hand side as operator second order derivative and first order derivative of time multiplied by gamma and constant term this. And these two can be combined. You will find the reason why this one can be combined and the first order term is separated from the other two. The reason is that if I take the derivative twice, cosine becomes again cosine, except that we have additional factor of frequency. However, 
If I take the single time derivative, cosine becomes sine. So these two will give cosine and this term will give sine when it is applied to the, this the trial solution with the, exactly the same frequency but non-vanishing phase shift. Okay, I, I apply this operator to the trial solution. The overall factor A omega is independent of time, so I can factor this A omega out. And omega zero appears here, and the second order time derivative of cosine will give minus omega squared cosine. And then if I take the first order time derivative of uh, this trial function, this cosine becomes a minus omega, minus omega sine with the same argument. Now we substitute the right hand side, this is cosine. Now, we have a constraint, the left-hand side and right-hand side must be the same. The only possible way to satisfy this constraint is to cancel out this phase shift factor by adding these two sinus order functions. We know how to do that. This is a number, this is a real number, so we A and B can be expressed in terms of the square root A squared plus B squared and A comma B over square root A squared over B squared, something like that. This one, square of these numbers and sum them up we will find one. So this is a, they can be parameterized as a cosine and sine. What happens? Let's see. If it is cosine delta, and this is cosine omega t minus delta, if it is a sine and sine omega t minus delta, the sum of this is cos cos sin sin. So cosine omega t minus delta plus plus delta. So finally, exact cancellation of the phase shift will give cosine omega t. That's what I want to reproduce. So game is over. Cosine sine, cosine sine must be this one divided by uh, this one and this one divided by the square root of, of sum of squares. Suddenly, I, I can find the solution absolutely. You remember, this is A omega, and I factor this uh, square root omega uh, zero squared minus omega squared squared plus gamma omega squared and this this one in the brackets this one is this one and that is identical to this therefore this factor this factor a omega multiplied by square root something should be a zero therefore i have indeed found the solution this is the solution and what is delta? Delta is just cosine of delta is this one divided by square root of sine delta is a gamma omega over square root. That's it. We have found the particular solution. This is a particular solution. I have found the particular solution that satisfies the steady state as t goes to infinity. What should I do if I want, if I have to solve the sine omega t style, and actually the same, the method is exactly the same as what we have done for the cosine case. Let's repeat 
the substitution will bring in the amplitude omega and psi the same psi and omega t the same the frequency must be identical to each other and i introduce a phase shift again operator differential operator is divided into two pieces that contains the no derivative and double derivative that will bring in the same signs and this one first of the derivative that will bring in cosine if i substitute this one into the equation what i have is again uh, over amplitude a omega and this one will bring in omega zero squared and minus omega squared and sine becomes a sine and the first order derivative will bring in in this case a positive sign because it is a sine gamma omega coming from this frequency and sine is replaced with cosine instead of sine now we want to find a solution for delta that satisfies the sinusoidal function to be the same as a sine omega t that is cosine sine sine cosine cosine sine sine cosine that is sine this so sum of this delta must cancel so this constraint will give that this one is a cosine what is this this one divided by square root what is the square root omega zero squared minus omega squared plus gamma omega squared okay so this one is cosine this one is a sine wait a second we are familiar with the, this cosine and sine this cosine and sine are identical to each other so the way of solving this cosine function and sine functions will give the same style of result so again the final state the steady state solution is completely determined in this form and this phase shift delta is identical to the case of cosine now i expect this is also true when i use the exponential case the exponential case is a quite uh, quite useful to unifying the two results we have obtained previously now I also introduce the same frequency, but introduce a phase shift again with the minus delta. Then substitute. While cosine and sine have different structure for the derivative, exponential, exponential a t, it's a derivative is a exponential a t its a second order derivative is exponential a t is a squared it's a trivial and the rule is a simple it doesn't brings in irregular sign change unlike the cosine or sine so exponential form is a quite simple again the separation of the operator into two pieces of even derivative and odd derivative the only difference is the real part is the same but we have indeed an imaginary part because of the sign but because of i that appears in the argument of the exponential function however its parameterization is quite simple because again we pull out the over vector this is the way if i have a plus vi 
And if I multiply its complex conjugate, then I have the expansion formula. And that is a squared plus b squared. Okay, so if I consider this, what I have done is to multiply is to multiply complex conjugate to find its absolute value squared. All right. All right. So this is a plus IB. In that case, a plus IB equals a plus IB multiplied by a minus ib divided by a minus ib that is a squared plus b squared a minus ib something like that all right now the delta delta dependence this uh, we have a uh, exponential function that is completely factorized. So this e to the i omega t, this e to the i omega t cancels exactly. So what I really find is a omega squared, omega zero squared minus omega squared plus i gamma omega multiplied by e to the minus i delta, e to the minus i delta, should be a zero. And then we divide this one by its absolute value, omega zero squared minus omega squared squared plus gamma omega, gamma omega squared. And because I have divided, so I multiply the same square square in the numerator then this is the magnitude of a zero that determines and this is a complex number with the magnitude one magnitude one means a plus a square plus b squared equals one exponential i theta its a magnitude is one it's sometimes it is a modulus In the end, what we have found is it is cosine delta plus i sine delta. And the final result for cosine and sine delta are identical to what we have found for the sine case and cosine case. So finally, we end up with the fact, the question, ma0, cosine, sine, exponential i omega t, all these kinds of solution are identical to each other in the basic structure. As long as the, the delta is, as far as the delta is concerned, there is a no different way, the, only a single way of finding a phase, phase shift delta. So you can, you can solve the equation using this, this, this. Everything should be the same. Finally, now we would like to analyze the structure of the amplitude. The structure of the amplitude contains the omega, omega, in the denominator. In the denominator, omega appears. So the amplitude of the particular solution depends on the value of omega. So when you change the omega, for example, this is a square square. So this is positive, this is positive. When omega equals omega zero, 
this first term disappears. Aha. So we would like to find the value of omega at which the amplitude is maximized. That is called resonance. When you're a child, you were a part of pendulum. That is called swing. You want to maximize amplitude by kicking or either way. How can you find the resonance? Resonance is to find the maximized frequency, kicking frequency. What should I do? What should I find the this variable frequency of the driving force to maximize the amplitude of X? That's our main question of the remaining part of this lecture. Actually, this is the actual values near Omega become the natural frequency of the simple harmonic oscillator without damping. Its amplitude is uh, maximized, it is maximized. This is gamma, so when gamma appears, amplitude decays. However, for any given gamma, amplitude rises up rises up and goes down and so this part for any gamma near the region where omega is near to omega zero the amplitude becomes maximized so we would like to find the exact value for this uh, resonance frequency that is to find take the derivative with respect to omega and find the value at which the derivative becomes a zero. When the first order derivative is a zero, this is maximum. In this case, this is a minimum. But the plot shows that our first order derivative vanishes, then that should be this one. Sure, it becomes zero at this far end infinity. That, is, that are not our concern. It's a trivial case for omega goes to infinity or zero. So that is not our concern, but the value at which near the value of uh, omega zero that is our concern. So in the denominator, this denominator has the contribution of omega separated. So why don't we, why don't we find the value to, to find the minim, uh, minim, um, minimum value of the denominator by reorganizing this expression by making use of completing the square. What is completing the square? X squared plus X squared plus BX is X plus one half of B squared minus this one. This one is called the completing the square. So I reorganize the denominator into this by completing the square. You can follow this. And now omega is contained in the square inside only, and the remaining piece is a constant that is a, by accident omega prime that we know already for the solution for the homogeneous uh, equation. Finally, what we find, this is a square plus a square that is independent omega is that this is the square that depends on the omega. Now, the exact value at which this one becomes minimum 
is the one to make this one zero. What is that? That is omega zero squared minus gamma squared, one half gamma squared, that is omega. That is the exact value for the resonance frequency. So, so resonance frequency omega r for the amplitude is not exactly omega zero, but uh, not neither this nor omega prime, instead a slightly smaller value than omega zero. Anyway, effectively it is uh, roughly it is uh, omega near to omega zero. Now, Next, we consider the case of velocity. The velocity amplitude is uh, quite useful when we study uh, circuit analysis in the next semester. In that case, the, they, use, they do not use the charge, instead the time derivative of charge that is called the current. So in the current analysis, that is the analogous to the case for the driven damped harmonic oscillator for the velocity instead of displacement. So when we consider velocity, what we have is from, the, from this kind of solution, what is the velocity? Time derivative, omega appears. In sine or cosine, and omega appears. So additional factor omega appears in the amplitude for the velocity. Then we take the first of the time on omega derivative and find the value of omega at which this first of the derivative vanishes. But Although it is, uh, the computation is tedious, you can always follow this to be factorized, a very simple formula. You know, this is positive definite, positive definite. In the denominator, that is also positive definite. This is zero only if omega r is omega. So, Although the displacement case, it has a resonance frequency omega zero, not zero, but this is square root omega zero squared one minus one half gamma squared, a velocity amplitude has its own maximum value. That is the maximum value of this and at exactly the same as the characteristic frequency of the simple harmonic oscillator. 